So the Sudbury Wolves are coming to town this weekend to take on the Barry Colts. And this season, we'll be talking to broadcasters from around the league just to get the sense of how teams are looking as the season progresses. And I figured we had Brian Cooper on last year. Let's bring him back to talk about the Wolves. It's a brand new season. Brian, how are you doing today? Not too bad, Mike. This is, this is kind of fun because you're right. Usually you and I chat at least once a week. But it's usually done the other way. So you know what? The very least that I can do is do this basically on the receiving end and answer the questions for a change. So I, I'm all for it, man. Let's do this. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're ready for this because your team, it's been an eventful 2024 for the Sudbury Wolves. They make it to the second round of the playoffs against the Battalion. Obviously, the season was cut short, so they're going to look to get past that. But now you've got new faces. you got a new coaching staff. Is this team... Going in a new direction, is that safe to say? But that's kind of what it seems like. I mean, I had a chance to meet uh, the, the new head coach, Scott Barney, in the offseason. A random story. I helped him move into his house. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I am open for hire if there's anybody who needs to move. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I've got lots <laughs> in my plate. Uh, you know what? He's a great guy. Fantastic family man. And, of course, coming from uh, Saskatchewan, like the guy's been in hockey for the longest time. And I think, and it's with no discredit to the coaching staff from last year at all, he brings a different coaching style to this team. And a lot of people have been keeping their eyes in the preseason to kind of see if they could notice any changes in, in how the team was kind of functioning. And it's kind of hard in the preseason, right? Because the players, you know, uh, it changes it's so frequently, the amount of players that are in and out of the lineup. But even the first couple of games, you can tell you can tell that there is a difference when it comes from the coaching staff. Drake Barahowski, of course, one of the assistant coaches. Uh, Andrew Desjardins, of course, uh, up there as well. And so complete change, as you mentioned, when it comes to coaching staff. And you're right, complete change. So it seems top to bottom when it comes to their roster, the way that the team overall looks. And I think you will see a bit of a different style in how this Sudbury Wolves team plays compared to maybe what you saw last year or the year previous. So I know we're only for the Wolves, we're only two games in. Um, by the time the Wolves go to v a Barry on Saturday or they're in Barry, that'll be game number four. But still, I, I'm quite intrigued, and I know everyone's intrigued to see how this team will really unfold and how to kind of they'll kind of mold together in a different way than what we've seen the past couple of seasons. And for Barney, coming from the humble Broncos, which we all know about the Broncos and their history, and he went in there basically to help that team get back on their skates. And uh, now moving to this situation in Sudbury, it almost feels like a, a similar challenge in the fact you've got a passionate fan base that wants to see a championship. And for Barney, kind of a tough spot to be in, but he's the guy that seems to be ready to take on that challenge. He does. He seems like he's totally invested already. And an interesting thing, too, when I was taking in some, some uh, even training camp action, I happened to watch the blue versus white game, and he was he was nearby, but he was actually sitting in the corner, the upper corner part of the rink during the entire blue versus white game. And I spotted that. Um, and you have to wonder, what is he looking for as the head coach of this team? You know, he's still getting used to the city, the nickel city, which is a lot different than I'm sure where he was coming from in Saskatchewan. He's got different staff. But again, I, I get the sense that he he demands a certain style of play. And he seems to be a really confident um, a coach to bring in, especially in a team that has gone through so many changes. And you're right. It's a market that the Sudburyans, we love our Sudbury Wolves. You know, residents here love their team. Mike, you know it. You spent quite a few years in Sudbury. This community yeah. is so invested in this team. And I think, although he's only been here for a few months, I think Scott Barney gets that. I think he knows that. I think he's been through that before. And I think what he brings to the, to the table will be fantastic for the Sudbury Wolves organization, not only this season, but looking beyond as well. And that's where my question comes in for the Sudbury Wolves going forward, because I feel like this team is at that spot where could they be a contender or are they a team that maybe is looking a little more to their future? They're getting Quentin Musty back from the San Jose Sharks. So I think a lot of people are going to be wondering what direction do the Sudbury Wolves go this season? Well, it's true. It's a big question. It's funny. I was just talking to somebody about that uh, earlier this morning. Uh, they said, Kind of that exact question. What do you what do you foresee from this Sudbury Wolves team heading into this season? Do you think they're going to be one of the top teams? And I, you know what, when you look at the roster, yes, it's it's a lot different than it looked last year. Maybe not as quote unquote flashy as the team looked last year. But the thing that really stood out to me, and especially when you factor in as we just talked about for a few minutes, the coaching staff, 
Um, the way that the team is is built right now to kick off this regular season, I, I could see this team developing a heck of a lot of depth. I really can. And I could see maybe it's not the team that's going to be number one in the Eastern Conference for the entirety of the 2024-2025 regular season. But I could see it as, you know, top four, top five teams maybe in the Eastern Conference. Kind of steady as she goes throughout the regular season. Like any other team, it'll have some ups, some downs. But honestly, as as the season goes on, I can really see this team developing some some good depth. And that is something which is really, really good to have, especially I know we're at the beginning of the season right now. When you want to talk about postseason, when you have incredible depth as a team, uh, even though you might not look as flashy as uh, some of the other teams, that can be an incredible asset, especially heading into the postseason. And that's honestly what I see from the Sudbury Wolves Club. I see that's what could be as well looking into 2025. And last season, a big question mark, it seemed, was the goaltending. So you had three goaltenders there at the end of the regular season. And Nate Krawchuk was a guy that was kind of buried a bit. We weren't seeing him play too many games. But now that he seems to be the starter this year, he looked great in that first game against the Barry Colts. I almost feel like maybe he's a little underrated in the Ontario Hockey League. I think so. And I think if you're Nate Krawchuk, I'm not, I can't speak for him. Um, I, I, I wonder. I'll just say it like that. I, I wonder if you're Nate Krawchuk coming out of last season because you're right. It was a recurring question. Where is Chucky? Why is Krawchuk not playing? He was in a tough position, and and rightfully so. And, and again, we don't know the conversations that happen behind the scenes with management. We really don't. So we can't speak for them either. But he was in a tough position, right? Kind of battling for a spot with, with two other goaltenders that were brought in to hopefully kind of bring some stability on the back end. And you head into this season. Those changes are made. Yes, he gets the season opening game. I know he was disappointed in the loss that the, the very Colts handed the Sudbury Wolves three to one, but you know what? All things considered, he did. He looked dialed in. He did. He looked dialed in. He looked comfortable. There was a lot of communication between he and his defenseman that I could see as well at the Sudbury community arena. I know the backup goaltender, Finn Marshall, he got the start in Sault Ste. Marie the following night and got his first OHL win, which was a huge moment for him. And so there are a lot of questions as for goaltending, because it is a topic which comes up when you talk about the Sudbury Wolves, because historically it, it has been an area where they could have um, used a little bit more strength in. And so I feel like if you're if you're Nate Krotchuk coming into this season, and again, I'm not going to speak for him, you almost wonder if he has a little extra something to prove, as in this is my spot, this starting spot, and I'm going to take this and run with this. But you know what? Time will tell. But you know what? Judging by game one, he looked dialed in and super comfortable. So it, it looks good for him to start off the regular season. Well, it's going to be interesting to see the response from the Sudbury Wolves this weekend coming into Barry. It's Crazy, it's already the second meeting of the season between these two rivals. And it seems like every game, even if one team might be struggling in that season, it's always a, a tight matchup. It is. And, you know, it's funny because uh, I think you and I had that very conversation as well about the Barry-Sudbury rivalry. It's always good. And I equate it to, maybe it's because they're in the same division, the Central Division. It's I almost equate it to the Sudbury-North Bay rivalry or sudbury Sault St. Marie rivalry. It is just there's something about it when those two teams match up, whether it's at the Sudbury Arena, whether it's at the Barry Rink, those two teams just know there's going to be a little extra fire going into that particular match. And and I feel like, yes, they've played game one in Sudbury, game two, as you mentioned, Saturday in Barry. You, you almost wonder if maybe the Wolves feel like they have a little bit of something that they want to prove going into the other rink now that they they dropped the, the season opener. And, uh, man, you talk about physicality. We saw a bit of that from the Barry Colts. And, you know, all the credit to them because speaking of teams that look a lot different, the Barry Colts, if they can stay healthy and they can stay the way they look right now at the beginning of their regular season, boy, oh, boy, it's they're going to be a heck of a team. But also to speak to your rivalry question, <laughs> this rivalry, I think, is going to absolutely heat up and heat up quick. And junior hockey fans are just going to love that. And uh, I know it's not about the Sudbury Wolves, but earlier this year, we found out that the city of Sudbury is going to be building a brand new arena. So a new home for the Sudbury Wolves. For me, I love going to the Sudbury Community Arena. It's got that that charm, but there's got to be a little more excitement uh, about this uh, new barn that is going to be going up across the street. Well, it's true. There's a lot of character to the Sudbury Arena. You go in there, you've got, I'm pretty sure it still has like the wooden ceilings in there. The acoustics still have the the similar sound that I'm sure were there 
however many years ago. It's got a certain smell, a good smell, a good hockey oh, yeah. smell. <laughs> it's all good smells. It's all good smells. But you're right. This has been a topic that has been on the conversation table in Sudbury for years, uh, years even before I moved to Sudbury. And um, I've been in Sudbury for 11 going on 12 years come January, which is crazy. But whenever this topic comes up in Sudbury, it's always a debate. You know, A, do we actually need a new arena? Where should it go? All those kind of questions have circulated. Well, you know, some interesting circumstances have happened and, and some interesting decisions have been made in the city where you're starting to see the, the properties right beside the rink. Mm -hmm. be bought up by the city and multiple buildings have been leveled uh, as a result. So there is space being made for, for something there. And uh, I mean, one can assume all, all the, obviously, but uh, it is true. It is coming. The, the rink, the arena is coming at some point, although I can't be specific as to when, because uh, even I don't know a lot of the details, <laughs> but I think when the day comes, it's going to be a beautiful thing for Sudbury. And I think fans in general are excited, whether it's an update to the existing barn or whether it's a brand new build. I think it'll be a really good thing for the city. And I know the press box is pretty iconic with media members in the Ontario Hockey League. And it even got featured by Chris Cuthbert at the Craft Hockeyville, showing that steep ladder that all the media have to lug their equipment up. But you do get a great view. And I think that's going to be the thing that when they do replace the arena, the media is going to miss a little bit because it is one of the best broadcast vantage points in the Ontario Hockey League. You know, it's interesting that you say that because now that I'm putting my thinking cap on, every house has a has a ladder, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to think if they need to get rid of that ladder, I would gladly take it at my house because it could be super helpful for cleaning up the eaves trough. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's true. I have gone up and down that ladder so many times that I've kind of, I've, I'm just kind of naturally used to the fear of going up there to the press box. And, and uh, just even this past Friday, I think I went up and down twice just to lug equipment uh, because I couldn't carry it all. And you just kind of get used to it. It's just one of those beautiful things um, when it comes to the Sudbury Arena that, yes, you got to kind of climb this slightly freaky ladder, which has a glass backing on it. So as yeah. you're climbing, you can see how high you're actually getting. <laughs> But I will say, and I've had the chance to um, be in every rank in the Ontario Hockey League back when I used to travel with the Wolves full time. And I would say out of all the barns that the Wolves travel to, probably the Sudbury Arena has one of the best viewpoints. If you are a play-by-play or color commentary, commentator, anybody doing or, or calling the games or if you're a journalist or something, I would say the Sudbury press box, although maybe a little shaky at times <laughs> and sometimes you come face to face with a wolf on a wire that goes a little bit too far that happened to me a couple seasons ago um it is probably the best view to to, to watch a hockey game but in, in our case for you and i mike to call a hockey game and that is something which i'm super grateful for and and you're right you know if and when this new build happens it, it, uh, i would hope that it would be just as good of a vantage point uh, to call a game from because there's some other barns in the league that it's we'll, we'll just use the word interesting it's a little yeah. interesting to call a game from i'll just just That's leave a it great at way that. to put it <laughs> interesting interesting um but in the meantime i've still i've put the idea out they should install like some sort of a pulley lift system for for like remote gear or something but <laughs> nobody's caught on to that idea yet but we we still make the climb as miley cyrus would say and uh, we do the games and we're, we just kind of get used to it here in Sudbury. So. Well, I'm hoping to make a trip up there at least a couple more times before the old barn goes away. But uh, Brian, thanks for doing this and uh, enjoy the rest of the season with the Wolves. Thank you for having me and you enjoy your season with the Colts. So that's Sudbury Wolves radio play-by-play -play voice, Brian Cooper. And it's always exciting to catch up with fellow broadcasters from around the Ontario Hockey League just to get a sense of how teams are looking, how they're doing over the course of the season and kind of get some stories behind the scenes that we don't typically hear about on a broadcast, like Brian there helping uh, current head coach Barney with his move into Greater Sudbury. So if uh, that's what you're into, we'll be continuing to do that uh, throughout the regular season. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Talk to you again soon.